Ah, Valentine's Day. A worldwide celebration of finding an idyllic match. A faded relationship. Your soulmate. Regardless of how you see it, this special day also marks a time in many courtships where love-struck admirers offer tokens, from chocolates to roses and everything in between, in hopes of striking a chord and fanning the flames of affection. You know, this really isn't so different from businesses who hope to attract customers by offering products and services that consumers can't stop thinking about. Whether it's a starry-eyed suitor or a marketing department, however, both have much to gain by first taking a moment to determine exactly what it is that their prospective partners are looking for. Because, after all, coming to the door with the perfect gift may be just the difference between the start of a glorious relationship or going home empty-handed. But don't take my word for it. Nature has vivid stories where the ideal offering has led to the ultimate prize. Welcome to this Valentine's Day edition of Nature Says. Mormon crickets seem to have lost the niche lottery. I mean, despite residing in the land of plenty, these crickets of the high American plains often find themselves living in food-scarce areas. As a result, calories are especially critical to the crickets. Against this important backdrop, when it comes to mating, male Mormon crickets don't come calling empty-handed. You see, in order to woo a female into the energetically expensive act of reproduction, the male Mormon cricket sweetens the deal by giving his prospective mate a handcrafted and calorically expensive edible arrangement. Instead of artfully arranged fruit, sculpted chocolate, and blown sugar, however, his gift is a commingled concoction of food, nutritious additives, proteins, and, well, well, sperm. If that isn't uncomfortable enough, he attaches this bundle called a spermatophore to an equally awkward location, his partner's genitalia. Somehow, in an instant, a singing messenger arriving at your work in full costume with a tray of chocolate-covered strawberries doesn't seem quite so awkward. Although, trust me, it's still pretty awkward. The male cricket strategy is simple. To provide the female with a time-consuming snack that enables his sperm an opportunity to travel into her reproductive system. Some of his sperm will immediately fertilize her eggs, where others, well, others can be stored by her for use on a later, reproductively rainy day. There's a lot on the line for this guy. On the flip side, there are major benefits to the female when she receives a large spermatophore from an armorous suitor. Most obviously, she receives a much-needed meal to keep her alive and churning out those eggs. More subtly, however, the size and quality of the gift is an empiric test of her suitor's overall health. After all, weak and emaciated males aren't capable of providing very nice gifts. To test the quality of the spermatophore, the female, she just starts eating. It's a relatively unsophisticated test, but like many things in nature, it works. As a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at the University of California so frankly noted, if a male transfers too small a packet, the female might finish off the protein and begin munching away on his sperm. In such cases, the sperm transfer is abruptly terminated. I'd suppose so. Knowing what's at stake, males endeavor to produce the largest spermatophore possible. But with such a valuable commodity on the line, they aren't about to give it out willy-nilly. Instead, they want the biggest return on their investment possible. It's for this reason that males seek out specific females. Which females, you ask? Well, the heaviest ones, of course. The logic being that the heaviest females carry the most eggs, and the most eggs give the male the greatest opportunity to have the most offspring. In the end, both sides to this reproductive deal have an agenda. But only when both their needs are met does the deal get sealed. The lesson? When a potential partner or a customer is poised to make a costly investment in you or your product, be sure you understand exactly what it is that they're looking for and why it is that they need it. Armed with this insight, you can tailor your offering to precisely meet the other party's expectations, and that will kick the relationship off right. It's like when the wants and needs of the extreme sports athletes met the product offering of GoPro, or the consumer seeking an escape from the humdrum met the adventurous branding of Jeep. In the end, identifying and satisfying your client's wants and needs is perhaps the most important part of any successful relationship, business or otherwise. Just ask a Mormon cricket. For everyone's sake, however, let's just hope that doesn't mean you showing up at someone's door with a sperm packet. Thank you for watching, and see you next time on Nature Says.